and welcome back to Noah's Window. And again, this week we're just uh, kind of cherry picking some of the verses that we're reading in the One Year Bible. And as Mark mentioned yesterday, we're still in the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. And Deuteronomy, you may remember, is Moses uh, talking to the new generation that's about to go into the land. And the theme of Deuteronomy is remember, remember, remember. This is the Mount Mary Alice version of the thing. No, that's true. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, yeah. don't forget. And teach your children. And we yeah. see that repeated a lot. We're going to talk about that maybe tomorrow. But in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, as um, Moses is beginning to wind down his talk here, mm -hmm. and he's kind of going, he's, he's gone into the specifics again. Now he's going back to the basics, and he's kind of basically saying, you need to listen to God and obey Him and, and love Him. And, and um, But he talks about those who rebel against yeah. what the instructions and so in um, chapter 29 verse 19 Moses says those who hear the warnings of this curse that's that God isn't going to bless you in fact you'll be under a curse if you rebel and, and disobey him those who hear the warnings of this curse should not congratulate themselves thinking I'm safe even though I'm following the desires of my own stubborn heart this would lead to utter ruin yeah what do you think about that verse well I mean I was just looking at my Bible here that I've got all marked up and and the first thing that I have below that verse is from the book of James, hearers but not doers of the word, because the Bible says here, they hear Moses' message warning them that if they persist in sin that they're going to have trouble. Mm -hmm. But I know this morning when we were reading this in our devotions early, you, you thought that it was significant that they congratulated themselves. They congratulated I mean, themselves. you know, it was as if they were congratulating themselves, this doesn't apply to me. And I was, I was mentioning it's like the people that you see um, just running a red light, a, a really, really red light, and we always joke and say they must have a special exemption card. They don't yeah. have to stop at red light. You know, right after this, it says, if, if this happens in the land, in other words, after people hear the warning of God on unbelief and disobedience, if they congratulate themselves to say, this doesn't apply to me, notice how God says next, this would utterly destroy the land. Mm. And my first response is, good morning, America, America. how That's are right. you? Because right. that is what's going on in our nation. I don't think, I think Americans in, in many many situations, they know the difference between right and wrong, mm -hmm. but they've congratulated themselves to, to think that it doesn't apply to us, that somehow we're gonna get by. And we're watching just the depth of wickedness and perversion mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. happening in our country. I mean, it's, it's just beyond imagination what's going on. And you can see God's point to say, if, if you can hear the difference between right and wrong, and you can stubbornly say, does not apply to me. God said this would utterly destroy the land. Mm. You know, um, um, I think it's so important, the willingness to want to obey. And, and I like how you went back to the book of James, because the book of James is saying, if you truly have faith, it's going to show up in how mm -hmm. you live your life. Yeah, yeah, uh, probably. And I don't know how you feel about this, Mary Alice, because we haven't really talked about it. I mean, there, there are some chilling things in the Bible, and I just think this is maybe one of the most chilling statements that's in the Bible. Because, okay, let's go back to what's going on. Moses said, people hear the word of God. They hear the difference between right and wrong. They're, they're challenged to receive the promises for doing right. There's judgment for doing wrong. But these people congratulate themselves to say, it does not apply to me. I'm going to do what I want to do. The most chilling thing that I see here is God said he would never forgive that. Mm. He would never forgive that. I mean, I really believe there's a distinction between a person who does wrong, and we all do wrong, but we, we know it's wrong, and, and we understand that we're running from God in seasons in our life, but we, we, still, we still know that God's word applies to us. You know, you know? It, it, and, and we will forgive that. But here, here's this person that's just presuming, well, hey, I'm going to do wrong. I don't care what God thinks about it. You know, God is a God of love. He's going to be fine. And God said he would never forgive that. I think it has to do clearly with understanding clearly what God's will is and disregarding it. And I, and I look at this cur current culture, the current Christian culture, and I keep trying to figure out, I keep trying to figure out, where did they take a wrong turn? Um, and and I've, I've heard some things, you know, like, um, we should ignore the Bible doesn't really mean what it says well that's what we talked about last weekend mm -hmm. right because you know we said what is it 65% of Americans claim to be Christians but only 6% of Americans 
have a biblical worldview. And these, as we saw, these were just very basic biblical beliefs. So clearly, they're claiming they're claiming this relationship with God. But I think in many cases, they're congratulating themselves to say that God's ideas of right and wrong don't apply to me. And I don't think it always happens overnight. I don't think it's like one day. I have a humble relationship. I want to be obedient to the Word of God in the next day, like I'm going to throw it all out. I think it's kind of a slippery slope sort of thing. Yeah. You know, just in the last 20 years, say, with us and our relationships with some Christians who've really just gone off the rails, yeah. um, the conversation started with, well, you don't really have to do that, or you don't yeah. really need to do that, or God doesn't really care about that, or and, and almost always, it goes to hyper Calvinism, but I know we don't have time to talk about right, that this morning. Right, yeah. But there's a connection with. Um, well, but there's a reason for that. I mean, for anyone that that term hyper Calvinism is is a problem. I'm, I'm, this is painting with a broad brush, but the idea is that God has predicted, God has already uh, determined everything that's going to happen, and He actually causes us to do everything we do. Right. We have and no so, will. Yeah. The, the the reason why it's popular for people that are off the rails is they. They don't have to feel the responsibility right, of our free God's will and our choices. Be, yeah, that's right. Because that's God why it's just a natural. It's just a natural uh, diversion to go. That, that goes back to the running the red line. You know, um, it, God gave them a pass for all this. Yeah, right, and, right. In fact, God told them to run that red line. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's another discussion. Yeah. Right? And of course, I mean, the hyper Calvinists will never claim that that's what they do, but they can't. If you pin them down, they have well, to. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's just a natural. It's a natural progression. It's, lo- it, you know? yeah, yeah. it's just natural logic. When, when you get if, if you get into the fine print. Of what they teach. If A equals B and B equals C, A equals C. That's right. So, and I think one of the key words in this passage too is stubborn because stubborn indicates a willful determination to disobey. That's what I saw so clearly when I was preparing for the message for last week was I saw that this comes down to a heart issue. And it's it's just what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, which is the quintessential verse about how to be saved. You know, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, heart, that God has, has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But it's still a matter of the heart. And the next verse says it's with the heart that mm-hmm. people believe unto righteousness. righteousness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Well, we don't want to be the people that congratulate themselves for no. being rebellious. I hope that's not the case with you today. And I know all of us are in conversations with people who are really confused on some of these issues. And we want to just continue to stand for the truth. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to do wrong. But it's important when we do wrong to admit it and know it. And, and not celebrate it. And not celebrate it, yeah. Right. Okay. Whoa, celebrate. That is what's going on in America mm-hmm. today. We're mm-hmm. celebrating. We're celebrating wickedness. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We are. Well, on that note, <laughs> um, we've got more good things to talk about tomorrow, so I hope you join us again tomorrow. But in the meantime, as we close, Mark, would you lead us in a word? Sure. Of oh, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to stay so close to you that when we do wrong, we'll have a sense of it immediately. And that we'll know that we need to confess it and be right with you. Thank you for forgiving our sins since we are sinners and sin way too often. But Lord, we never want to congratulate ourselves that your word doesn't apply to us. We know it does. We receive that word even when it rebukes and convicts and, and, and makes us aware of our failings. Oh Lord, we still love your word because we know that when you speak to us, when you give us a command... It's for your glory and for our good. We trust you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Window. I hope you'll be back tomorrow on Wednesday, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. God bless. God bless.